Hey guys, uh, this is the second video for the end phase grid tied inverters. I now have two M250s hooked up to a 1K 24 volt wind max wind turbine, or they're made by HY Energy. Um, and I just wanted to give you some more readings here and show you where I'm at. I did manage to max out at 24 miles an hour. I wasn't home, and that's just what my data recorded, so I don't know if I have more room to go for another inverter, but I'm going to hook up a third inverter and see how that works. But I just wanted to show you here the low wind watts uh, that it can start producing at. I also adjusted my circuit board so that I can allow just a little more voltage to run up the system before uh, the inverters grab all the way. So as you can see, these are the watts coming in. And they run different. I mean, depending on when the, if the wind actually hits the turbine dead on or on the side a little bit of the blades, the watts can vary for... <laughs> I can get 160 watts at 12 miles an hour, 11 miles an hour. It depends on the wind. Um, but the efficiency of these inverters are unbelievable. So I'm going to let this run a little bit. And you guys can get an idea of where I'm at, what the wind speeds are, and what these inverters are doing. And remember, this is at 240 volts. So the left meter is 120 and the right meter is 120. So if you add up both watts, that's the total watts being produced. Again, it's a 240 volt system. 120 on the left, 120 on the right, and this is one turbine. So that was about 80 watts at 10 miles an hour. And I've seen more than that. And you got to give the fact that the blades have to catch up to the wind meter as well. The wind cups are small, they're going to spin up a lot faster, and it's going to take time for a five and a half foot blade to catch up to that wind speed. I did add a uh, capacitor to my circuit, um, calculated the correct one to get where I want to get. I'm sorry about that wire. Uh, as far as raising my voltage a little bit, and it seems to have helped. So what I called is the pocket. Uh, putting that capacitor in is allowing the turbine to stay in the energy production pocket, where before it dropped out right away, and now with the capacitor, it seems to hold itself in there a little longer, which means longer, you know, longer watts being produced. And again, these aren't killer winds, but I wanted to start by showing the lower end of it uh, rather than the higher end of it. And please excuse the wiring. It's an absolute wiring mess in here. I've been experimenting with all this stuff and uh, have torn the systems apart 10 times over. As you can see, there's some damn good watts being produced in these little wind speeds. And the inverters are they're staying right with it. They're producing right what they need to do, um, right with the wind speeds. There's no lag time. If I hit 40 volts, that's when my dump load kicks in. So if I'm over volting, um, you know, under 20 miles an hour, then that certainly means that I have room for another inverter. And right now what I did was each inverter, I have two rectifiers I'm using, one for each inverter. Uh, I haven't tried stacking them and just running one rectifier. So two rectifiers, and uh, they're split off the three-phase coming in. And then the DC goes to one inverter off one rectifier, and the DC goes to another inverter off another rectifier. And just to show you this wiring mess up there, that's one rectifier going into an inverter. This is the other rectifier going into the other inverter. And here are the here are the inverters over here. There's an M250 there. And I'll show you that the light's blinking, so you know there's the light blinking. And here's the other one up top there. So you can see both of them. All right, and then over here is the control circuits I have. There's more down here. It's a mess in here, but as bad as it looks, it's actually not too bad. So here's the system again. Let me get a better view over here. This one mirror, you can't see it. If I go like this, it turns black. I don't know why. I guess it's bad lighting in here.
And I tried doing this with the M190s, and um, they're just, they work totally different. They're too complex for wind. Uh, the gates, there's a gate on them, and it needs to be held open to 28 volts, then it pulls it down. If you go under a certain voltage, they shut right off. Then there's a lag time to produce again. Or the M250s seem to work much better. Now I'm in four mile an hour winds, and that's pretty cool considering I'm at uh, about 15 volts. So we're right here. 14, 15 volts? Yeah. Yep. And we're about 14, there's 12. Wind speed's down to three miles an hour. So that's pretty good. You're hitting voltage pretty good. So using a little grid tide inverter, uh, you're making watts. Chinese kind, anyway. And I'm trying to get us away from that. I'm trying to. Make it so that we can all get UL inverters for 24 volt wind turbines and not have to buy outbacks and batteries and all that. Because let's face it, I mean, the batteries are cool and all. It can be wrong if you're into that, but you got to replace your batteries after a while. Um, these inverters here, they should last a long time. However, I don't think the warranty is going to cover <laughs> using these things with wind. I don't know how Enphase would feel about that. They probably wouldn't warranty it. But if it's done right, you shouldn't have to worry about that. As long as the inverter doesn't fail under the problematic of the wind turbine itself, uh, you should be good. We had a couple good gusts. Uh, like I said, I had, I do have the maximum recorded on here. You can see it's just 23 miles an hour on the wind meter. We'll get some more watts here. When it drops down, I'll show you the max watts on the, uh, on these kilowatt meters. These kilowatt meters are great. They're better than the uh, the ones you can get like at Home Depot, the most common ones, the P3s, because these here show the highest amount of watts you produce. So if you reset it, you know, daily, uh, you can get your highest watts produced if you're not around to watch this thing. And obviously it shows your kilowatt hours and stuff like that. But these guys here are actually a little cheaper. You can get them for about 18 bucks a piece. And they show the highest wattage made. So if you're not home and you want to know what your system's doing, you can simply check the uh, high and low watt production. Okay, let's go in. Uh, sorry about the wiring this again. Let's go into high watt production. So there's that side, and here's this side. So there you go. So according to this, 23 miles an hour, I got. Sorry, move this around here. I got wires everywhere. All right, I got about 400. It's a 520 watts, right? Yeah, 520 watts I got out of, out of two M2, M250s. They're rated at 250. However, I'm showing here 520. So they can put out a little more than what they say. That's pretty damn good. So 520 at 23 miles per hour. Now, if that's accurate, which meaning that if my dump load didn't kick on at that time, then I certainly have more room for another inverter. If my dump load did kick on a little bit, then I certainly have room for more inverters. So I could potentially get the 1,000 watts that I'm looking for in 30-mile-an-hour winds. I'm very close. I would have liked to see the 18 mark at this number of 520, you know, 18 miles an hour. But uh, right now, it's pretty damn good considering nobody has ever done end phase with a wind turbine. So this is a first you guys are seeing here. Okay, so let's go back to the watts. Sorry, guys, I'm doing this all raw. I'm trying to do my best here. Whoops. There's, whoops, one, two. There's watts there. So there's, remember, we're doubling this. So there's 40 watts. There you go. And the nice thing is about all this is everything is even. You have a balanced load, it's called, where you have the same amount of power going into each leg of your panel. Um, you know, you don't have 50 watts going in on one leg and 10 watts going on the other. It's the same throughout. Which means that these inverters don't fight each other. They're not fighting like the Chinese inverters, where one will produce and the other one will, you know, try to, it'll hang back because it's not getting enough power because the other one's sucking the power. All right, so here's a tidbit more of information. I've got two more inverters to go here to get the system to produce 1,000 watts under 30 miles an hour. And then we are going to put these in a box, and we are going to start selling them. 
I don't see any reason why these can't be put on the market uh, to help us all out for micro wind. Um, you know, the, I don't know what I'm going to get for the inverters. The inverters right now are about 160 bucks a piece. Hopefully, I can get the cost down. I'm sure I can because I am a dealer for them, and um, you know, I can make some headway with all this, man. Uh, that that would be really cool. You wouldn't have to buy the 2,000 watt inverter anymore, and um, you simply take my box and <laughs> hook it up to 240, turn your put your turbine in, you're good to go. So let me know. Give me some comments on what you think about it. As far as what the low wind end's doing, I'm pretty happy with it. I mean, I you know I don't know if it's going to work on every turbine, but you know you're seeing it here first. That it, it's definitely going to work with a 24,000 watt uh, wind max or HY energy wind turbine. Definitely going to work with that because that's what I'm testing it with. Uh, I do have a windy nation I can try, but for now I just want to try a beefier turbine and see what happens. All right, see so the voltage drop there? That means, I think, what happened there? Ah, uh, you know what? It must have turned out of the wind. I got some turbulent wind up there. Ah, uh, I know what happened. <laughs> I bumped my voltmeter. That's what happened. See, we still got voltage coming in. So some of this stuff is like just, I got it literally like just plugged in. To some of my connection points and sometimes I bump something and it comes undone and that's the way it is but anyway here's the volts coming in up there so, all right so that's one that's one inverter this is DC power by the way and this is the other inverter and it won't start producing probably till you hit about 23 24 somewhere in there you'll start seeing that P light up Okay. All right, guys. That's it. Um, that's what I got so far. Um, so leave me some comments and let me know what you think. Thanks, guys. Take care.